Um, so thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here on um, Ngunnawal land in the ACT. And um, as you know, my name's Kirsten. I'm from the Conservation Council ACT region. Um, just going to switch into the presentation, click share. We've got to press all the right buttons. I'm now screen sharing. Can you see where I'm at there? Um, yeah, but it's, it's still not the slide to, Yeah, I'm going into slideshow now. Slideshow. There we go. Can Good. everybody see that? Make the yep. switch. Um, so the Conservation Council um, ACT region um, has been, I probably should get, just get rid of this little um, sidebar there. There we go. Um, uh, the Conservation Council ACT region has been uh, operating in Canberra for over 40 years. We've got about 40 different member groups spanning a huge range of environmental interests from bees to plastics to um, transport. Um, it's a really diverse uh, group of organisations. Um, and uh, our policy platform, which we develop in consultation with our member groups, um, has a clear agenda to um, tackle climate change. And one of the items there was to phase out the use of gas in the ACT by 2030. Uh, now, the policy commitment by the ACT government is to phase out the gas network by 2045, um, which is probably a more realistic time frame, um, but at least we've got that timetable um, uh, now or that commitment now happening. Um, so page, how do I, uh, page, sorry, it's a while since I last did this. There we go. Um, the imperative um, is to tackle climate change, is to reduce greenhouse gases by nearly half globally by 2030. And that um, was made very clear by the IPCC in the latest synthesis report, which was released in March of this year. Um, so the pace of climate um, change is accelerating. And so the pace of action to tackle it really needs to accelerate um, dramatically by then as well. Um, this is um, a fracking gas field or um, in Queensland, um, just to give you an idea of the um, environmental damage that gas mining does, as well as the um, emissions uh, damage to the climate. Um, so each one of those little dots is a gas well. Um, and that's state forest that has been infiltrated by this gas network. And you can see that it um, has a dramatic impact on fragmenting habitat with all those little roads, um, as well as the, um, the danger to um, contamination of soils and waterways. Um, so normally at this point, I um, ask for a bit of a show of hands of who um, has gas in their house, um, but I can't see you, so maybe we'll save that to the end. Um, the Conservation Council in 2020 uh, was given a grant by the ACT government, uh, Community Zero Emissions Grant, to develop a the Make the Switch website. Um, this is a little screenshot of the homepage. Um, and this was, we developed this to help Canberra households to get off gas. And this was even before the commitment um, by the government to phase out the gas network. Um, so the the premise is that families can save money, they can um, improve their health, and they can also tackle the climate. So why switch to um, an all electric home? It really is a very, um, getting off gas is a very meaningful way for households to take action on climate change. Um, because climate, uh, sorry, gas is about 22% of the ACT's um, greenhouse gas emissions. Um, so getting gas out of buildings uh, would make a significant difference. Um, how do you go gas free? Um, it sounds like five simple steps for some people, it'll be um, easier than others. Um, first is improve your home's energy efficiency. So that's stopping drafts, insulating, um, you know, maybe double glazing, putting up curtains, lots of um, different uh, jobs that you can do around the house. Switch your heating to electric, switch your hot water to electric, switch your cooking to electric, and then close your gas account. Um, the 
uh, website recommends um, heat pumps or reverse cycle air conditioning, as we know it in Australia. Everywhere else in the world calls it a heat pump. In Australia, for some reason, we call it reverse cycle air conditioning, but it's the same technology. Um, and these can also be known as a split system because you've got the condenser unit outside the house and typically, and the um, you have an indoor unit which actually pumps the air through your room. Uh, we also use heat, recommend heat pump technology for heating hot water. Um, and again, it can be a split system, um, like you can see in the photograph there, or it can be an all-in-one where they put the condenser unit on the top of the tank. Um, it's exactly the same technology, except that you're heating water, not air. Induction cooking is um, the most efficient form of electric cooking. It's also super responsive, um, lots of great safety features um, and uh, also some uh, additional features depending on uh, what model you choose. Um, so you can combine cooking zones so that you can put your big pan on to do your gravy or, you know, lots of interesting things like that. Um, and then not paying another gas bill is a super exciting milestone. Um, you, there are stages in actually closing down um, that account and getting right off the gas. Um, so we can talk in that a little bit more detail if people are interested in, in that. Um, the website has a calculator so that you can get in there with your gas bills and you can um, put in the information about what, what appliances you have in your home, uh, try out some different options for replacing with different um, electric options and then have a look at uh, the comparative um, running costs of gas and electric. Um, these uh, figures are yearly running costs in the, the graph there, but it also presents you with a, a table that sums up the rough, uh, a ballpark um, estimate of installation costs and um, how much you'll save on um, running costs. There's heaps of information in the website about um, uh, different options. Heat pump and induction is not the only option. There are other options for electric um, heating, hot water and, and cooking. Obviously, there's um, solar hot water, for instance. There's um, you know, different kinds of um, radiation, radiator heaters and so on. So it's not just about heat pumps. There are other alternatives. Um, and there are links there to all of the financial information, um, financial schemes that are available. Uh, in particular is the um, ACT Government Sustainable Household Scheme, which you may have heard of. Um, that's $15,000 interest-free over 10-year repayment period. It is means-tested, um, and um, but you can find out all of that information directly from um, the Everyday Climate Choices website. So who's switching to all electric homes? Well, ultimately, all of Canberra needs to do so. Um, so we've got some case studies in the website of some different examples, freestanding homes, pensioners, young families. Um, we don't have any, we do have some information in the website um, for people in apartments. Um, and we will be adding a bit more information very soon for renters. Um, because we know that they, in particular, have difficulty um, having to negotiate with landlords. Um, there's also a really great section in there of myth-busting Q&A. We get all sorts of um, questions from people uh, through our public engagement. We go out to um, shopping centres and um, markets and things um, and do these presentations for different groups. So we, we've heard everything. Um, I would be surprised if you could throw something new at me at this point. <laughs> um, so uh, lots of great answers to um, all those typical sorts of questions that we get through that engagement. Um, the gas in a blackout um, is a, a one of particular um, concern for people, uh, particularly we had, you know, some pretty severe storms up in Belconnen over the previous summer where people were sort of um, off, off power for about five or six days. Um, and we've had lots of comments from people saying, oh, I'm so glad I had my gas or if only I'd had gas. Um, but in fact, gas appliances really shouldn't be used without electricity because of um, 
the safety aspects of anyway. Um, and the electricity network is going to be upgraded over coming years to facilitate the transition off gas onto electricity and resilience of the network is a, a key factor in that upgrade. Um, there's also a planner, action um, planner in the website that you can download for free, print it off on your own um, printer at home and, you know, sit down over the kitchen table and um, plan out your transition. The next thing that needs to be tackled after the stationary gas is transport. 62% of the ACT's emissions come from transport and that includes, in fact, that is mostly from private vehicles. Um, most Canberra households have at least one car, um, very often two cars. Um, and so the um, Conservation Council developed a second project called Make the Move to help families to tackle their transport emissions um, by choosing different modes of travel. So thank you very much. That's my um, presentation in a nutshell. And I'm happy now to um, stop sharing and we can 